So hello and welcome to a cycling video about the angler. So we have comparison of 2011 and 2017. So we have Kobo 2017 full kilometers go and 2011 Contador is on the front. Um, he's off the front and we have Froome and the red jerseys group just behind. So Froome's in the red jersey group and both times and you can see the comparison between the two riders. Between the two, well two events really. Not just the riders. So... Well, Pools was also in the group in 2011, and Contador was not, I don't believe. So those are the only two riders I believe are in both. Uh, actually, Nibali was in both as well. Uh, so you can see on the right, a lot of people out the saddle, doing a bit of grinding, and on the right, everyone's got good cadence. Uh, you can see, I think Nieve is just moving up to help assist Froome. So on the right, we, uh, Wiggins is in the leader's jersey. He's got about a 20-second gap on Froome and about two minutes to everyone else. And on the other group, there's about two minutes from Froome to all the rest of the GC contenders, and that's the last stage for Froome. I think this is stage 15, um, maybe for the Vuelta in 2011. So I think that's Jenny Moscon on the front who's helping out with the pacemaking. He had a, he had a real good Vuelta. Uh, but anyway, you can see Kobo on the right. Kobo's on his own. Number 61, he's just spinning well. He had a 34-32 on that day. He was one of the only people who really knew the, the, the climb that well and knew what gears to put. Now everyone knows about the climbs and they all know what gears they need to put on their bikes in order to be able to spin up the climbs. Okay, still sometimes they make mistakes, but mainly they've got a lot better because they've actually looked at the power a lot more. So you can see Contour's in fifth place, 3 minutes 34 down on Froom. Sorry if you get confused, this is going to be a very confusing video. So Kobo is 26 seconds um, ahead of Froom. So Froom and Wiggins had a real difficult game. Um, difficult time on this climb just because they didn't have the gears. Even Contador, who probably had a 36-32, I think was what I estimated a lot of these riders had. He was struggling. He might have even had a 34-32. He was I definitely he definitely had some low gearing on the back. I just couldn't couldn't figure out the front. But he's Contador often gets his gears right. He he does like to be quite precise on his gears. He's um I think he cares a lot more than well not necessarily cares but just is a lot more meticulous. So Kreuzberg's trying to gain some time trying to move up. I think he was maybe was just out the side of the top ten or something, but he was he wasn't really a podium contender or anything. He's going off. You can see Nibli has sent his lieutenant old um what's his name? What is that bloke's name? The old Italian bloke. Um can't remember his name. Forty year old bloke. Anyway, he'll come back to me. Um he's on the front and he's driving hard, trying to get Koiswick back. I think Koiswick might have been trying to get a podium spot, maybe not. Anyway, you can see on the right, Kobo's pretty much on his own. He's just spinning away, and uh, we'll see in a second some good... Yeah, Koiswick, sorry, 10th place, trying to get in the top 10, that was it. Um, 10 minutes down, so quite quite a way away from Froome. And anyway, so you've got Froome, who is fourth wheel, and Froome doesn't like the sharp acceleration, so you see he often drops the wheel. While Powell's had a solid ride again... Um, managed to get fourth, I think it was, uh, in the end on the GC, so it was, that was good for him. Or maybe he got, just got a top ten, actually, I can't remember, but he, he had a good good thing. Quintana's, oh no, no, that's not Quintana, that's Soler. Then we have Kelderman, then we have Zacharine. So they're all, um, all super lightweight riders, all really trying to smash off the front. Um, so you can see Consul's got a lot of graffiti on the road, lots of people trying to get to him. He's a big man, he hasn't won a stage yet in the Vuelta, but he's he was really an animating the race all the time. So you can see that it's a lot wintry, a lot cloudier on the right compared to the left. This is Nibli, actually. He was really struggling on the gear on the right. If we look at number 81, I'm pretty sure that's old Vincenzo in his liquid gas kit. Um, he's struggling a lot on his Cannondale. He's, look at the gear. That's like 60 cadence, probably 400 watts, 400 watts at 60 cadence. And like anyone who's trying to do that, no matter how fit you are, that's that's tough work. That's tough work. Um, he's... Really light bloke. And anyway, so he's still got old, what's his name? <laughs> the old Italian bloke on the front. What is that kill's name? Anyway, can't remember. Uh, we got Mosk on there, we got Froome there. You can see on the right, we got Kobo, he's just all his own. So Kobo did attack a long way out. Because Contour attacked on the descent and then just held it. But Kobo really. Kobo's really gone out <laughs> on a strong one. 3k to go on both of them, so you can see it's. They're climbing pretty similar speeds, to be honest. The the timings, in terms of the, the speeds, haven't really increased that much, really. Um, maybe you could say there's less pressure um, on the left, so they're not climbing as fast. Maybe if they are faster, but I think roughly the climbing speeds haven't increased in too much. So you can see here, Contador's just all on his own, just like Kobo. And they both, 
both struggling a little bit on some parts, but mainly they've got they've got good cadence. There's mad crowns everywhere. Um, until you look at some of the power data, like um, Woods had on it, and like the speeds they're going, they're going like eight k an hour, ten k an hour up these climbs. Like they are crawling up these climbs. Um, but still, look, they've got they still got good cadence. But here we go. This is this is the classic clip. You're about to see Froome, Daug, and Wiggins just do not have the right gears on their bikes. Look at them out the saddle, but that's not out the, out the saddle attacking, which often Froome does, um, and then sits back down. This is out of the saddle trying to just survive. Like, he doesn't have any more gears. Um, and if you look at Kobo, Kobo's got... You can sell, tell he's talking a little bit, like, using a bit of talk, because that push down is quite hard it's uh compared to the pull up which means he's really struggling to get over the gear i'd say but he's still he's still like not overly like laboring he's not designed to get up the saddle he can mainly keep quite a good cadence he's probably about 80, 80 cadence i'd say now which is which is good um and i mean you can say i talk about cadence a lot but on these steep climbs you can just see what happens like you can almost feel like like in their legs that they're just burning and they just want an easier gear and you just have to question yourself like why wouldn't you try and put an easier gear on your bike if that's what you need um especially at these real steep climbs but look here you can see Kroisok's really digging in he's trying to keep that momentum that's the other thing sometimes it, it, it does pay to be in a slightly smaller a slightly sort of bigger gear so you can just keep the momentum going because if you change as soon as you get steep you lose all your momentum so yeah sometimes that it does make sense especially on some of the shorter climbs because the momentum is so important but on this one it's mainly just like keeping the watts up, keeping it consistent, not trying to spike the effort, um, and gears can really help you do that if you've got the low enough gears, because you don't have to spike um, your power just to try and actually hold the wheel, and um, sort of get the speed, because the problem is, that they're going so slowly that like, if they sort of don't, if they, on some of these bikes, especially in the 2011 one, I'm watching that one a bit more now, like, if they don't pedal hard enough, they are going to fall over, like, because their gears are just so they're not they're not small enough for them to spin in the saddle, so they have to get out the saddle and try push it because otherwise they just won't be going anywhere. So Kroisberg is making a real brave effort, and the thing is, is that like you have to be brave because you have to realize that like it's not a normal climb where you, maybe you can recover a little bit. There's no five percent, there's no four percent, there's no even eight percent. It's all at least ten percent, and it's just absolute death. Look at Molomo on the right hand side and the Rabo Bank kit. He is crawling up the climb. He is hurting so much, but you can see, like, now, he's not going to click it up into a harder gear to try and get in some speed. What the hell is that bike doing? He's almost knocking someone over. He's trying to get in the smaller gear to just keep the canes on. Oh my God, not sure what's happened to the footage on the right, but I see some mad crowds. But here, it's just like you're on the limit, all you want. You can see Froome on the right. Look, he just wants an easy gear, but you look on the right, they're probably not even going as fast now, I'd say. Um but they still have the gears because the gears are easier to get because more amateurs are cycling, more amateurs want ge lower gears, and also more professionals want lower gears, to be honest. Um, and everyone's realised that cadence is better. Like, having high having more gears is always better than having not enough. Like, you're never like, oh, a few, you know, carried that third. Like, you're never like, oh, no, I carried that 28 around, I didn't need it, or whatever. I carried that 34 around, didn't use the 34, should have just held the 32. You're always like... Nah, I wish I had more gears. Like, and then when that one day happens and you need that 34, you need the 32, you need the 28, you'll be so happy when it's there because you'll just be able to spin. You can see on the on the left, Contador's really struggling now. He's really grimacing. He's giving it absolutely everything. It's pretty much his second last competitive bike race. So to, like the day after that, it's a bit of a procession. I mean, it's still a hard race, but it's but for him, it's it's probably a bit of a procession. But look at these corners that they got. They're just so steep. And, like, the change of rhythm really doesn't suit some people like Froome. Froome really had to train for this climb. He was saying he did a lot of, like, was sort of climb at maximal effort and then sprint as hard as he could up these sort of short little climbs because it uses quite different muscle fibers in order to sprint up these little ramps. It's not like an alpine climb where it's maybe 8%, max 10% all the way. And you can just sort of get in that rhythm and just hold the wheel. This, you really have to put in some sharp efforts. You can see Kreuzberg here is just, just absolutely struggling. But even him, he's, he could have a lower gear and he probably would find it easier. I mean, just be more lactate in the legs. And you can see Zacharine as well, who normally spends 105 cadence. He's, he's a real high cadence rider. Again, doesn't really have the gears suitable because they're just not going fast enough. Froome, I'd say, is getting away with it just because he is stronger than a lot of these people. So he might be able to have a slightly lower gearing. So survive. Nibali's now cracking. So he did have his 
lieutenant on the front, uh, the Italian bloke, but now he is cracked. Um, and he is struggling as well. But look at the, on all of them. You know, like when it's a 8% climb, they, they're hurting, but they're always like relatively sort of calm and they're not too stressed. But at the moment, <laughs> they're blokes trying to kill them. I love the Spanish police. They're so aggressive towards the fans, but the fans disrespect the riders at all. But Nibali is just struggling. He's just trying to pull the pedals over. Kelderman's also struggling. He's just like, he needs that podium spot. He wants that podium spot. And he's just not sure if he's going to be able to do it. But look at all the, the Spanish fans are going crazy. But then on the right-hand side, Kobo's just taking it. He doesn't have a super aggressive position, but he's in that 34, 32. Like, it's weird how now everyone has such an aero-aggressive position. But back then, people would get away with relatively wide handlebars. Like, you probably get, it's probably on a 42, get away with a 40 or a 38 centimeter wide bar. But he's concentrating on the power transfer. So here we go. Frooms have knocked it up on the right, on the left, sorry. And he's going around some of these real steep hairpins. Wildpools is trying to hold his wheel. Wildpools goes the steep way up. So it's come on, Froome, let's go, lad. Let's go, let's go get the win. So they're going to chase Contador. Questions are always arise. Did he really want to chase Contador, win the stage? Um, because he didn't want to upset Spanish fans. I think Froome in that moment was going full gas. I think he just wasn't as strong as Contador. Really, Contador did have a big advantage, but even so, I don't think he was strong. Contador was really motivated for this race and just absolutely killing himself into the ground see even now Kobo's just he's just got that good gear he hasn't really been out the 32 much like every time he comes back he's pretty much in his lower, lowest gear which maybe means he could have had a even lower gear maybe a 34 34 I mean it's like I don't know once you get into that rhythm of like oh maybe I could get a lower gear you sort of think like oh like I could definitely have a lower gear now like because you get into that mentality oh I just need to push the lowest gear but when you realize that there's even lower gears and actually it's a lot more comfortable then then maybe he could have maybe he could have gone lower like maybe a 40 cassette now nah, 40 cassette would have been too much but a 34 34 would have been great for him i think and he would have probably been a bit more comfortable maybe he wouldn't have gone that much faster but it just would have been more comfortable maybe the next day he would have felt better his legs wouldn't feel as blocked that's the thing you have to think about these stage races it's like it's all it's not just about that day and it's not often that the riders will really go full gas like give themselves a hundred percent to absolutely kill themselves unless they guarantee time advantages because they gotta wait they gotta think about tomorrow like they could gain 20 seconds today going absolutely full gas but lose two minutes tomorrow because their legs are blocked because they just went too hard um so that's why it's it's hard especially on these steep climbs to really pace yourself well luckily for the people in the 2017 tour of spain they didn't have um they, they didn't really have to think about that because the, the last day is not, not super hard. Uh, it's more of a profess, procession stage. I mean, I say that, but, I mean, it's still hard. Like, your amateur, amateur cyclist wouldn't, wouldn't finish a uh, well to uh, procession stage. So it's a bit 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 of a discredit to say that, um, really. But you can see Contador is going up this real steep part. Um, I think I think Kobo is pulling ahead, to be honest. I haven't really tried to cap up but I think Kobo's pulling ahead um, you can see that it's a real crazy climb I'd love to do this climb I think it'll be terrifying on the descent um, but incredible on the ascent like just the steepness just the just the way even if you have a lot of gears like you need to have serious gears to be able to ride this at your own pace like you can see most of these riders are just dictated the, the pace they're going at is just dictated by their gearing and like as hard as they can go they're not really thinking I mean, obviously they're going full gas, but even if I had, like, unlimited gearing, I'd still just need to go pretty hard just to, like, stand up. Like, that. you can't really just go tempo or easy tempo up here. You really have to be setting a good hard tempo um, close, to, close to your, your as, far, as hard as you can go for 40 minutes and just hope you can survive, to be honest, because it's, it's a hard climb. And here we go, through me. Still got good gears, good gears. Look at that. Bit lower than usual, but still good cadence. So one k to go. Flam Rouge for uh, Kobo. So you can see he's taking he's taking the lead. He's taking the lead um, from Contador. Contador is definitely slowing down, and I think Froome is speeding up. So he gained thirty seconds in quite quite a quick time. Actually, he was one minute behind, but he's now thirty seconds behind. Um, time gap's not one hundred percent variable. So you could say that because Contador was further ahead, that the Chris Froome's probably climbed as fast as Kobo. I'd say he probably probably has. Maybe a little bit faster, but you can see Wout Powers is ninth place, so he managed to get the top ten, which is pretty beautiful for him. 
um, Wild Pills likes steep climbs, apparently. He was saying he really likes the angler. He did well last time. You can see he's gapping Froom Dog because he's got that acceleration. He can tolerate that slight bit over the threshold where you're sort of gasping a little bit. He can tolerate that while Froom, I feel like, he really doesn't like that. He just likes setting a really hard tempo, um, as hard as he can go. And then as soon as that happens, well, that's um, that's what he can do, Mr. Froom. So you can see Contador is coming towards the end of his... Uh, the end of the race, Kobo's coming towards the end of the race, it's a bit of a false flat downhill, it's a bit weird to be honest, like, um, this last part of the angry, it gets super hard, but, I mean, you've got it in the bag by now, look, he even took some newspaper Kobo, because he's, he's just, uh, he's worried about getting too cold, he's putting a minute into Froome and uh, Wiggins, that's, that's quite incredible time difference, so you can see down the hill they go, takes the left, sweeping left hander, it's pretty much downhill all the way to the, f the finish of the angler route, and Kobo is going to take a great victory. Contador is going to take a great victory. Chris Froome is going to take a great victory in the Vuelta España. He won the Tour and Vuelta that year. And really, just what a what a great race the, this climb has. I missed 20, 2015 with Kenny Ellison, my favourite bloke. Um, but anyway, great race. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, we'll see the remnants of everyone else coming in now. But it was... It's a tough, it's a tough climb every single day, time they use it, and everyone was always like, "Yeah, could have done with some more gears. Could have, uh, could have not done that climb. Can we have like a sprinter's finish at the bottom and only climbers go up or something? I don't know, but um, yeah, it's quite crazy. Uh, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed, um, and I'll see you next time. Where you don't belong Ever since I left the city